this looks like the other half of the power cable. So that's everything that's in the box. And now I'm going to see what I can do to get this set up. All right, this is the user, user manual. Be safe. This is a foot pedal. That's a really interesting foot pedal. I must say, I've never seen one fit like that. So little. I'm kind of confused about how these connect, but I guess I'll find out. We are finding out all the things. So even though electric eel wheels started as 3D printed models, they are now molded plastic and made in China. And it's a much more high quality, more durable product and still fairly affordable. So that's really nice. So this placement diagram is actually really helpful because it helps you line up and it's just one more step to help you really understand where things are placed. Let's see here. It is a little bit awkward because you need to clamp down this tensioner and they need to be parallel to each other. So it would make more sense to use it at the end of a table so you can use a clamp, but I'm gonna keep it here just to start. Can't move this to the edge of the table to clamp it there because it needs to be centered on the winder, but I don't want to move the winder off the edge of the table because then it might fall off and be unstable. So that's just a little bit of an awkward thing. That's probably why he suggests to use a board to screw it down to, but then that's going to take up a lot of space like in my house. So I'm going to hold off on that for now. There's a flat edge on the back, which is easy to clamp. So you kind of actually need to have two clamps and there's one clamp included, unless you're screwing it down to a board. So maybe I will end up screwing it down to a board. To install new cone, you will need to use the arm key. Where's the arm key? This is the arm key. Okay, that's interesting. There's this arm key, which when you're not using it just hides down below. And when you need to use it to hold the arm thing up, it goes into another spot and that holds it in place. That's kind of clever. And we've got the bearing, we've got a cone, cone holder, and then this is going to snap into cone arm. And then I'm going to lower that onto the winding drum by taking the cone key out, putting that in. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay. So this little springy thing is called a disc tensioner. And he's saying it goes into the tension device somewhere but that generally it's not gonna work as well, but you can experiment with it. So that's, I mean, a lot, that's a clever little thing. All right, okay, hold that thought. I'm gonna go get a board. We're gonna screw this down to make sure that everything works right. Okay, so for now, I think I'm going to just screw down the tensioner onto a single board that can extend to a spot where I can clamp that board down. And then I'll move the winder to the edge of my table so I can clamp that down. This way I'll be able to store it a little bit more efficiently rather than having it on a big board. I don't really have a place in my studio right now for a cone winder all on its own. Although if it's really as awesome as I'm hoping maybe I will make space. Yeah. Well, that's another awkward thing is that the direction of it matters because now I've got like the dial is over on this side, how you set it up is going to matter. Well, we're going to run with this and see what happens. This clamp is kind of a lot like the clamp that you might have if you've got a Swift or a ball winder. I do find that the quick grip clamps, I have the Irwin ones that I'm using on this tensioner. Those are really nice. I might actually just end up investing in another one of those to use permanently with this guy because they're just a lot easier and faster to adjust. Where do I plug it in? Where does the electricity go? Okay, so the electricity goes in on the side over here. So you don't have to use it with the foot pedal, but you can. I think I'm going to try it with the foot pedal just because of the way that it's over on that other side. And it's turned off, so I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so you plug in the foot pedal first, then you turn it on. Oh, look at the, okay, okay. Let's find some yarn. So we're gonna run it through the tensioner. Oh, that's interesting. The tensioner can kind of move. Okay, so this this cable is if you wanted to use the yarn counter along with this whole setup. So if you wanted to know your yardage specifically on the cone, 
That's what this extra cable is for. Wrap the yarn around the cone a few times. That's clever. Okay, so we've got to pull the yarn into one of these grooves. And so that's what that yarn threader is for. And then when you're done with it, it just goes back in there. Oh, that is so clever. That is awesome. Very cool. We're going to lower, Let's see what we get. I'm gonna start kind of slow. That's a little, Let's see. A little faster. Okay. That said, no, we're not gonna go any faster than that. Okay. I think it doesn't love when there's some tension on the Swift. It sort of slips a little bit and pauses. So I took off some of the extra tension that was on the tensioner. And I'm being really careful to hold my hand basically as another tensioner to even out the tension. And I can also kind of help things along when they get stuck on the Swift. This is something that I actually do a lot on my electric ball winder. You probably just need to make sure you're careful with the tension and going at probably a slow speed. And I don't think it's really a good idea to set it and forget it. But you need to be here to be able to turn it off if something does go wrong. Okay, that's my first cone. Well, that, friends, makes me very happy. That is a cone of yarn. And that is really kind of a game changer. I am really excited for this product. There is another manufacturing run being done of these, so you're not going to have to wait nearly as long as I had to wait to get a product, but I think he's probably going to be releasing the next ones probably around January or February or so. So be sure and get on his mailing list if this is a product that you think you might be interested in. I've heard a rumor that there are a few left over from the initial run as well, so if you get on his mailing list quickly, you might be able to snag one of those even faster. So this is definitely a game changing product and I can't wait to see how many cones of yarn I can fill up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.